It's time for the last movie and TV roundup of 2023. Everything that released over the last two weeks, the best, the worst, and everything in between. Let's get into it and we'll kick it off with the worst stuff of the week. Yes, the finale to the DCEU starring Jason Momoa as Aquaman was anything but glorious. This uh, is just horrible. Just, just I, I don't even know. I don't have anything to say about it. Just don't see it. It's really, really bad. It's bombing pretty hard at the box office. I don't know how many people have seen it, but look at that octopus. He's staring straight into your soul. That's making me uncomfortable. So let's move on. Rebel Moon, um, sci-fi. On the other end, Zack Snyder gets free reign to do his Star Wars take, and it feels like a first act of a pretty underwhelming free act story, but instead we get that over two hours as a separate movie. I don't think uh, this worked at all. Had some decent visuals. I feel like the writing was pretty bad in this and it didn't help that the performances weren't really there for me either. So it's a solid skip on Rebel Moon part one, A Child of Fire. Next up, uh, Trolls Band Together. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of this series. I mean, it's the squeaky pop songification of, 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 of movies. Uh, really safe. If you want to plug a kid in front of the TV screen, have them sing a bunch of popular songs, then I guess this is your thing. Uh, I really didn't like it. I thought it was very lazy. Golda, now this was on the short list for makeup and hairstyling uh, for this year's Academy Awards. Uh, as you can see, there's a big old schnozer on Helen Mirren's face, and that's essentially it. I think that's probably the best part about the film. Uh, it comes from the guy who made the Oscar-winning short uh, Skin, which I also watched for this, would go into the same category, horrible. This is also pretty pointless. I didn't like this at all. Yes, the second season of What If is unfortunately also quite underwhelming. Uh, I feel like they should have gone into more of the direction of Star Wars Visions, getting in different studios to do standalone stories, but they're so set on still having some sort of connected universe in this. It was so underwhelming. Uh, I think the biggest joke that they have is like references to other things. So it feels like a really, really, really subpar version of like maybe Rick and Morty that gets to do these references, but they're so lame because they're Marvel. There's nothing really interesting about what if season two and it's not gonna turn the ship around for Marvel, unfortunately as well. So let's have a look at some better titles. Uh, first up, Christopher Bregoli's second feature that came out in 2023. The other one's Sick of Myself, which by the way is also worth checking out. This one stars uh, Nick Cage, Dream Scenario. I think it has a really fun concept going for it as this guy who pops up in everyone's dream and they have this collective experience. He gets fame from it and the repercussions that come with it. Then it tries to do something uh, different that I don't want to spoil in the second half, uh, but I feel like those are two completely completely different ideas that maybe you could have uh, kind of woven into one narrative. It doesn't 100% come together in the story, but I think it's still worth checking out. And it's another really solid Nick Cage performance. Saltburn, now this one is almost in the worst category uh, because I don't really like the twist that it takes. I feel like the direction takes some swings. It's got stunning cinematography. The score is, uh, the soundtrack is really fun. And Jacob Bellordi, how can you deny I him. Uh, Rosamund Pike is also really good in this film. It's just like a, a movie that wants to be memed, that wants to be super weird, uh, but it kind of fails to tell an interesting story. It's more concerned about uh, those memeable moments and then some really obvious twists that you can kind of see a mile away and a unfortunately pretty unintriguing central character that doesn't really have much when it comes to character progression and was kind of looking for that in Barry Keoghan's character. Next up, Occupied City, the four hour long or four and a half hour long documentary from Steve McQueen about his now residing hometown Amsterdam, where basically makes connections between World War II. It was filmed during COVID. So there's a lot of like empty streets that they got to shoot on while everyone was in, in lockdown. It got some interesting narrative beats where it connects the past to the present but it's very much like a art piece. I don't know how much of it works as a four hour plus movie, but 
in segments. I think this is a really stunning documentary feature. Michael Mann's latest Ferrari. Uh, yeah, I think this is just a really decent and entertaining uh, and also loud <laughs> movie about Ferrari, fast moving cars. Maybe not the greatest acting when it comes to portraying uh, Italians and it's mostly just Americans that do like a weird Italian uh, accent. But it still, it still is Michael Mann. It still is entertaining. It, there might be not like a ton of substance there, but I still had a good time with it. So yeah, if you like cars and I, I don't like cars, then you might even have a better time than I did. Then the creator, this uh, came out earlier in the year, but it's now streaming on Hulu and uh, Disney Plus internationally. And I think this is uh, one of the films that could have done way better at the box office, but didn't end up doing that well for being kind of a mid budget with like around 80 million and having those types of visuals that are put on screen and the creator. I think it's really impressive. The story is also, uh, I think, not up to a level to like a Dune, but I feel like there are really interesting narrative beats in there that uh, if you like sci-fi, uh, it might feel a bit familiar, but I think the creator is still worth checking out. Then if you want to just have a bunch of vibes on screen and don't really pay attention to it that much, uh, Pokemon Concierge, a four episode Netflix show, has like this uh, stop motion feel with a bunch of cutesy animals and there's not much going on, but if you like Pokemon, it's a nice background thing to have on. Lessons in Chemistry, Brie Larson plays a scientist that ends up on TV cooking. Uh, it has a lot to say to show. I I don't know about its presentation though because it has like a moment at the end of episode two that is really impactful for the character and the show and they keep kind of undoing it until like the final episode and it just feels like really unfocused uh just a bit of a mess overall of a show but it has some decent moments so that's why it's not like in the worst category yeah it's a decent recommendation and then reacher if you are uh, over 40 maybe a dad you really liked ferrari then you'll definitely like reacher i guess uh just a big hawk of a person based on a novel series that i think has like 23 or 26 entries uh the second season of the show adapts i think the 11th or the 13th novel uh i think it's just a really solid action crime show it's fun uh it's entertaining not a lot of depth there, but I mean, it's Reacher. What do you expect? That brings us to the best releases of the week. And kicking it off is A24's The Iron Claw, directed by Sean Durkin. It stars Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson, uh, Lily James as well. Really a great cast, a great story that I'd say don't read up on it too much. Uh, I went in really not knowing much about this family and the family curse of this wrestler family. I found it uh, really, really effective uh, in the way it was telling its story. And I really don't want to spoil much about it. I think it's pretty much in limited release. It might even not have an international release yet in some places, but uh, this is one to keep on the lookout in the next couple of weeks as well. Sofia Coppola is back with Priscilla. Uh, another movie is out on premium VOD. I think it's pretty much out in theaters in most places, so uh, should be widely accessible to anyone. And I'd recommend it. I think I definitely prefer this over last year's Elvis. Austin Butler did a solid performance of Elvis. I think Jacob Elordi really embodies uh, this star persona so well that it kind of translates very nicely to Elvis. Uh, and we never really get a grasp on him as much, which really aids uh, Kaylee Spaney's performance as she's just kind of groped into, roped into this world. And uh, yeah, really darn intriguing movie. Go check it out. And then Perfect Days, my favorite movie of 2023. Wim Wenders really captured lightning in a bottle. It's crazy to think that uh, he initially was hired to do a documentary on toilets in Jokyo and ended up doing this really profound story, character study on a guy living a pretty simple life that is still incredibly rich. I think the soundtrack is so fun. The lead performance is incredible and just everything about it, I really loved. And everyone I've recommended this movie to really ended up loving it as well. So uh, yeah. That's probably my biggest shout out of the week. Go check out Perfect Days. And in memory, this is uh, only out in limited release, I think in the States. I don't know about any other place. You got to check your local markets, but put it onto your watch list. I think this is a really solid performance from Jessica Chastain and Peter Sarsgaard. 
uh, about a guy who uh, has memory loss and about someone who has some really uh, traumatic memories and they kind of bond and connect um, over, over that sort of thing. I think it's a really, really solid drama. And then Anatomy of a Fall, I think the hype has really been up to, for this film ever since it got the Palme d'Or in Gun. Everyone's been super excited to see it. And now you can see it. Uh, it's in the rental window right now. So probably the cheapest it's been so far to go uh, check it out. I think it's a really, really solid film. Uh, I'm gonna revisit it this week again. And uh, yeah, go give it a try. And then a really small film that uh, has come out a while ago, but I only caught up with it uh, this week. So I wanted to give a shout out to Small, Slow, But Steady, a drama about a deaf boxer who uh, is really connected to the people who work with her uh, at a gym. She has a couple of gigs where she's fighting. She's slowly crossing into being a professional boxer as they almost struggles with the gym financially and they might have to shut it down as the owner is retiring. Uh, it's just a really neat uh, little story that I think not a lot of people have had on their radar, so shout outs to Small, Slow, But Steady. And then finally, the 4K restoration of James Cameron, The Abyss, hit theaters not too long ago and you can now purchase the uh, restored, really, really crisp looking uh, print of the abyss for your viewing pleasure at home, which is exactly what I did. And I had a great time with it, watching it for the first time. I think it's really cheesy in parts, but there was just something about the filmmaking that was uh, really, really engaging about this one. I had a great time with it. So go check out the abyss. But that's it for this week. Let me know what you've been watching and what your favorite films of 2023 were. Go check out the Quiet On Set podcast. We're about to do our award show for the best films of 2023. Free. And starting now in 2024, I'll try to actually do these weekly and hopefully there's enough releases to keep talking about them. But uh, yeah, if you haven't already, leave a like and subscribe. There's more reviews coming soon. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.